Ready, set to go, and Madam Clerk has a resolution to read. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Rebel, resolved that Council rise from the committee of the whole closed session without report. All in favor? Carried. And no, the true body agenda, there's no agenda. Uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest and the nature thereof today. Do we have any to declare? Having seen none, we'll record that in the minutes and move on to the adoption of the minutes of January 19th. Moved by Councillor McDonald, seconded by Councillor Higgs, resolved that the minutes of the regular council meeting held January 19th, 2022, be adopted. Any questions on those? None. All in favor? Carry. No deputations or presentations, so we're ready to move into the committee of the whole. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Deputy Board Higgins, that Council adjourn and meet as committee of the whole with the Deputy Board and Chair. All in favor? Thank you, Warden. Uh, well, first up, we have the briefings from uh, Kelly Pender, Chief Administration Officer. If, just while Kelly's getting second, everybody please turn in the camera. <coughs> Too late. Could we ask? Could we ask the CAO to take his mask off so we can see his furry face? <laughs> what fur? <laughs> he was expecting not, a cold winter, and we got it. Did he not shave again this morning? <laughs> I think it's longer than this morning. <laughs> Just a growing boy. That's them all. Wider and wider. You're missing one. Oh, maybe what's wrong with fur? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This is the CAO report for February the 16th. And as always, if you have any, have any questions, please pause. And if I can't get the answer, I'll get it to you. And uh, so a busy few months of lockdown and meetings. Um, not sure I got out of the office much, but uh, did have a lot of meetings. Um, we do have a report on the agenda, a couple of reports on the agenda regarding capital for long-term care. And the KPMG report from East Frontier Wards Caucus has been well received across the region. We'll go into it a little bit more detail. But we are now proceeding to meet with advocacy, other advocacy groups. Uh, it's been provided to the Western Wardens, to the Minister directly, and uh, Advantage Ontario. I'll uh, meet with them next week, and that last week with the Ontario Long Term Care Association. So there are some significant issues around funding for long term care capital projects, and we'll be discussing that further on. So I thought Warden's Caucus and Leadership Council meetings over the, the past month, um, we did have a number of issues at the, at the Warden's Caucus, including the approval of the budget for 2022 and the hiring of a staff person to assist with, with advocacy work. So that job advertisement will be going out to us probably in May, because it's a six month start as of July the 1st. Did have a delegation at Roma, a number of delegations at Roma on the 24th and 25th, with virtual, of course. We did have three priorities that we spoke to the province about long term care, capital funding, uh, continued uh, discussions about the four hours of care and the inability to hire staff, the administrative monetary penalties that does you know, part of what Susan will talk to you about in terms of the changes in regulation. We talked about that a few weeks back, that the province will not be able to find staff and board of directors to this council if we do not meet the requirements. And our position is that some things are just beyond our control. For example, hiring staff that don't exist. So that will continue to be a priority of the, the uh, Warden's Caucus. We did meet with the Minister of Long-Term Care as part of the meeting, uh, also met with the 
PC caucus, the Liberal caucus, and the NDP caucus. Again, I can stress all the same things we have. The other priorities are housing and homelessness issues and affordable and sustainable housing. And the province has made a number of announcements over the past couple of months, most recently a third party review, where there are a number of recommendations in that have the potential to drastically change how planning will take place in Ontario should this government choose to move forward. All right, question from Brock, Councillor yeah. Vanderwall. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if it's a question, it's a comment. Uh, this came up last night at our council meeting too. We were looking at a, a housing plan in Verona and one of the stumbling blocks is gonna be, I mean, the, the apartment was about 18 and then there's seniors housing, affordable housing, all those things. The stumbling block we're running into is the regulation on water. And so I know they're gonna talk to the county, but they, if the province is saying that they want to streamline how affordable housing is done, that's going to be a major stumbling block because you can't get over six on a well. So we're, I, my understanding was there are, they are going to talk to the partners here at the county, but they want those things brought forward to streamline the, that process for sure. Absolutely, and if you take that policy in conjunction with the third party review, which says that your municipality will not have the ability to say no to increased density, it will be forcing municipalities to do a lot of work in advance of that and taking up, just taking decision-making such as what in the building look like in Verona or Charlotte Lake or wherever. So there are a number of implications and we will be bringing that forward to the wards caucus because the Ministry of Municipal Affairs is saying one thing, the Ministry of the Environment is saying something else. And in our opinion, doing all the work required to get a permit to take water and to get a license to operate a system should be sufficient to meet the requirements under the source water protection. So is that third party review going to bring those challenges then? I asked that question at the Ontario Leadership Council meeting last, oh, when was that? Whenever, last, last week. week. Last week. And the ministry response was, it's under careful consideration. <laughs> that's, that's always reassuring. I, I can't imagine, although if they're acting at breakneck speed, so for example, I don't think their regulation changes. Something that would normally take probably 12 to 18 months, they managed to get through in a few months. So will they be able to get this through before the election? I don't know, but there is a lot of pressure on that now. So I wouldn't be surprised if it is. The East Ontario Leadership uh, Council met on February the 9th. I could look at the next slide. Uh, we are sending out an expression of interest uh, for services. So for example, Eorn's accounting and procurement is done through Peterborough County. Uh, the Eastern Ontario Wards Caucus is done through Hastings County and Leisha Council is looking for a host municipality. We have a couple that have stuck their hands up and would like to like to be bidding. That is a fully compensated task. It's, it's paid for by the caucus, but it's just easier for insurance and auditing purposes to be run through. And a number of different uh, project updates and Kathy Wood, our project coordinator has been amazing at getting grants. So at the end of last year, 1.2 million and has a soon to be announced project will be well over 1.5 million projects uh, aimed at economic development in Eastern Ontario. Deputy Warden Higgins has met with the ministry and they agreed that we're gonna be meeting on a far more regular basis to talk about ways to get things done Regionally, the province is very interested in funding regional economic development initiatives, such as transportation and housing, and some of the priorities that are brought forward in the province. So at the uh, Rama conference, and uh, hopefully that is my last ever virtual conference. <laughs> here, here. <Yeah. laughs> We did have delegations with the multi ministers, and I, I believe there were nine ministers in attendance at that, including the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and, and the Minister of Health, and did discuss our priorities. One of the priorities of the entire caucus is the relationship with Ontario Health Teams. 
And as you know, Gordon Doyle and Gordon Razee from Lennox and Addington are now at the table. You've had two OHT meetings. What? Two OHT We've meetings. We've had two meetings so far. Yeah. Uh, and one of the issues is that the OHT was asking for money to be to participate. And we had made it quite clear that, that we don't think it should be the group that's going to get funded should have to pay the group that's going to make the decision to get funded. My analogy is that to be asking the condemned prisoner to pay for the electricity for the chair. <laughs> and this isn't just from Mac and Ellen a saying this. Uh, the Wards Caucus was very strong on that in an meeting with the, the Minister of Health. And she agreed that OHT should not be funded by the by the member uh, organizations. So hopefully we've made some progress on that. I think her word for no fee for a seat at the table. Correct. Yeah. Uh, affordable and attainable housing, obviously a big, big issue throughout Eastern Ontario. Uh, and the minister uh, at that point said that there will be a third party review that was announced post. Changes in there, if you take those recommendations. And of course, long term care capital funding. Uh, and the example used was Northumberland County's reconstruction, re not reconstruction, construction of the new Golden Plow Lounge, Lounge, <laughs> Golden Plow Lodge <laughs> in Northumberland County, um, which is right now at about 105 million, 190 beds. And provincial funding falls about 50% short of paying for that, which means that every taxpayer in Northumberland County for 25 years is going to be paying about $60 more in their taxes just to pay for that money. And because our turn is coming, and uh, you know, it's very important for us to look at that funding formula and make sure that it is, it is fair to the taxpayers of Eastern Ontario and to Pontiac County, uh, that will be a Strong advocacy position for the word Scott's going forward. Oh, sorry, one more. So, jointly with the LNA, uh, both words uh, met with uh, the Minister of Health one on one to talk about OHTs and where they see the direction of going with OHTs. A number of these different issues we've talked about over the, over the past uh, two years that we've been negotiating with the OHT. For example, Lisa Grenville is in three different OHTs. The Pontiac Lennox and Addington OHT also include parts of Leeds and Grenville and Hastings County. So decisions made at that OHT table, for example, if one of the OHTs decides to have community paramedicine, that will, and the other two in Leeds and Grenville decide not to, how will the county decide to implement that? It's going to be very difficult because they are not following municipal. Boundaries, they're following catchment areas. Gordon has a question. I, I, not a question, I just want to comment on uh, uh, Kelly's last bullet there. I, as you know, have been in this business for going on 16 years and have had dozens, if not hundreds, of, uh, of meetings with ministers and other provincial officials. And I can only think of one that was anywhere close to the attention we got with. Uh, LNA and ourselves that day. Like she was right with us and so so uh, uh, in tune with what we're saying was unbelievable. Yeah, and I think it's important to recognize that the difference between a county delivering health care and a hospital delivering health care or, or a not for profit community services delivering health care is that we both have a, we have both a taxing and a spending authority. And this group at this table is responsible to the taxpayers to make sure that that spending is, is, is fair and equitable. And the OHT is, does not have that same responsibility. We made that point in the industry. A number of different um, provincial initiatives and I won't bore you with, with those, but um, as always, we do have a couple of RFPs that are closing, and this is the Paramount Home Redevelopment Option Study. So this is what we 
we're going to do back in 20, whenever, when did the pandemic start? <laughs> 20, 2020. 2020. 20 years ago, yeah. it feels so like. <laughs> just prior to that, we brought to council a report having to do with looking at options for, for Fairmount, because we know that in 2025, we're going to be faced with some difficult decisions as to what to do with that. And the province had asked us to have an additional 32 beds, which we applied for and then took back because of the pandemic. So this is getting back to that. So before the end of the year, we'll have a full report back to in terms of what your options are. Fix it, put a Band-Aid on it. It's a small addition for what uh, Northumberland County is doing, which is a complete rebuild in, in tier nine. So yeah, we'll be looking at those options and that closes on April the 4th. So we should have an update for you at every point. Also, you remember we received a $1.2 million grant from the province to um, upgrade the HVAC at Fairmount, and that will close on April the 11th. So the engineers have that uh, package and it is out on the street right now. So that'll include um, there'll be better airflow and air conditioning in, in the building primarily focused on. Just an update in terms of the admin project update. And I had to look back and, and uh, Warden Doyle, remember this, this recommendation actually came to County Council on December the 15th, 2013. So that we look at uh, redeveloping this building. So we're only about eight years out from that initial recommendation, but um, we'll be going to tender shortly and back to this council. Uh, for a decision, obviously, to the conservation authority. I uh, don't have a really good sense in terms of where pricing is. The architect says that it's been all over the map, some very high, some somewhat more reasonable, but certainly uh, probably above our estimates. So we won't have a, a decision to make. And then we'll have to deal with the uh, phasing and timing and how all that will work. And the architect has some very good ideas in terms of how to make that work. To, the least disruption to, to either organization. So we would likely have to have an admin office task force committee meeting sometime over the next uh, six to eight weeks. So uh, Matt has provided a communications update and I just uh, had about, uh, you know, it's a quiet lockdown month, but it's all engagement. It's up about 40% over the same period last year. Uh, Frontenac paramedics, including the deputy chief. Um, recruitment efforts was our number one. Um, social media uh, post of the month and uh, Facebook and Instagram numbers now combined per channel and the county YouTube, which is primarily where we broadcast these meetings through those numbers are provided as well. Councilor McDonald has a question. Yeah. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Kelly, how does Frontenac County, I don't know whether you can answer this question, compare for social uh, media interaction with the public with other counties in our neighboring area? For paramedics, we're outside of the city of Ottawa, and I have a I can get Matt to, to run the numbers again, but we were the number one outside of the city of Ottawa in eastern Ontario. And our county website is about average. There's a few that have more, and there's a lot that have less. But I can run as much more as I wish, please. Thank you. Thank you. Our engaged front neck site, which is a, a project of all five municipalities, is gaining, a, gaining some steam. We had about 1,100 visits over the month of January. Some, uh, Exciting projects on there, but nothing beats uh, the miniature snowball, snowman project at, uh, at Fairmount. And our number one post was naming a snowplow in South Frontenac. <laughs> Did Plowy McPlow face win? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it made that. So, just a planning update from, from Sonia, North Frontenac RV bylaw. The Sharp Lake School Site Redevelopment the meeting, the public meeting is tomorrow night at four. If you'd like to, if you'd like to watch that, you can uh, register through the Engage Front 
NAC site. And as of this morning, we had 55 interested individuals that had signed up. 54, if you don't include me. So, um, uh, big thank you to uh, Central Front NAC staff for, for hosting that and all the work that they've done, and to FCM for providing the grant money to look at the feasibility of developing the build school site in Charlotte. Staff are in the process of conducting research on several administrative process improvements, uh, and including planning fees and delegated authority, as well as recent changes to the Planning Act and reports to be going to Township Councils over the next year. Sir Vanderwall has a question. Uh, are, is the Charlotte Lake School site going to have the same challenges then with water? Well, when or because it was a school, could that well be grandfathered, which I told happened somewhere. McMullen Manor, for example, is all on one well. And the well is still there, even though the building burnt down, but that well is gonna be grandfathered to create a new building. So I don't know if that, maybe you should think about that one then if that happens. That's what I was told. There's the potential in Sharper Lake to get it on the lake, which kind of gets around source water protection because it won't be enough. So okay. But again, this is this is very high, kind of like Verona. You know, this isn't down into the weeds in terms of what is the best servicing option that would be the next step. Right. This is just what is possible. But certainly um, using a lake water source simplifies the process. The rock makes it complicated. Planning applications uh, can uh, I was talking to Sanjay yesterday, and uh, the number of inquiries is, is held steady right through December and January, and we just continue to have strong applications throughout the county. <clears throat> Our regional economic development uh, working table. Um, this was the recommendation in the 2020 Black Line Economic Development Service Review. So those are going to uh, start up again in Christmas and the third. And the tourism website is now uh, visited from NAC to reflect the tour tourism focus of the website. So it's that change, we still get here to the world, but uh, officially we're going to be promoting it as visit from NAC. KMP Trail, uh, all trail users reporting some of the best conditions uh, in, in several years, and maybe the warm weather over the next few days will ruin that for us, but certainly a lot of different uh, feedback. I think really nice to see the snow as far south as, as Verona, where people are getting off and using on their swimming pool. And from the LMA Ridge Runner Snow Club, we've had a record traffic on the KMP. The amount of muddy water says it's at one point last weekend, she had 21 snowmobiles in the driveway at once. So. But it's no let it snow, let it snow. Human resources update uh, 54 uh, postings through. Uh, last Friday, including 24 paramedic positions. Our Deputy Chief of Operation, Heather Edward, is leaving us for a position up west. She'll be last day at the end of March, so we're in the recruitment process for the Deputy Chief of Operations. Um, our bargaining dates are there for you. And we have started our uh, diversity and inclusion in the workplace training, which is a requirement for our accreditation for Fairmont, but we've extended it throughout the county. And that should help us with some of our recruiting efforts as well. And our HRIS project uh, that we're doing jointly with Aids and Granville and have selected Star Garden and that project is underway and hopefully be up and running here. So big thank you to Aids and Granville about the the process on this and uh, looking forward to working with them and developing uh, knowledge across Aids and Grenville and on that and the operation of this very important software. Congratulations to Councillor Higgs, uh, recognized for all his contributions to Rotary. Thank you, Councillor, and we appreciate everything you do for the Rotary and all of your travels. And Welcome home and uh, that's the welcome.
Uh, congratulations to Lori. And many of you know Lori from sitting at the front desk is now the executive assistant to Paramount. And I wish Lori all the best. Uh, the joke that we traded her from a horse on the hockey pucks, and we haven't got the hockey pucks yet. But <laughs> Lori's doing very well. And Aaron, that uh, is Lori's place at the front counter, is taking Lori's place over there. So we're losing her. But hopefully, I bring her back uh, by the end of June. And I met yesterday Brianne Marshall, who is our Assistant Director of Care for Infection Prevention and Control, which is a new position required under the Long-Term Care Homes Act. And, uh, Brianne has uh, extensive experience at Rio Press and at Harbor Heights in Infection Prevention and Control. And she was meeting the staff yesterday and getting the lay of the land. This is week two. And her name tag quiz will be tomorrow, I believe, yeah. They will be asking you to name all of the long-term care staff. So with that, thank you very much. If there's any questions, and if not, I'll turn it back to the deputy work. Thank you, Kelly. Um, we don't have any unfinished business to take care of. We're moving to recommended reports from the chief administration officer. First one is corporate services. Moved by Councillor Vanderbilt, seconded by Councillor Mark, to resolve that the Council of the County of Frontenac accept the Corporate Services 2021 Frontenac Howell Islander Ferry Petition for Subsidy Report, and further that Council authorized the clerk to petition the Ministry of Transportation for $1,051,762.52. Heard the motion. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, next is the County of Brunac Climate Action Plan. Moved by Councillor Revel, seconded by Councillor McDonald, be a result that the Council of the County of Frontenac authorized staff to hire a summer student to work with staff on the initial first steps of investigating a climate action plan to include the establishment of a state of the county report dashboard and the county's roadmap towards carbon neutrality by 2051. To be expensed from the $30,000 ECPM allocation. Motion, any questions? Councilor Randall? Just, just a comment. I, I appreciate the language you're using so far this year that it's not like some other municipalities that are calling it a crisis and everything else. And at least we're using, I think, the right language to look at where we are. Councilor Randall? I'm, I'm just wondering if. Yeah. I'm just wondering if the student um, will be doing some work with our municipalities as well to um, see if they can incorporate some stuff that would help us out as well. I think the short answer is at this point probably not. Kevin, sorry, probably not, but the tool that he or she will be developing can be picked up because we share GIS. We'll be able to work with each municipality to input their data. So I I think we're, you know, at this point, we're going to prototype and make sure that we can report correctly to the province and automate as many processes as we can. Um, and that tool can be used by any municipality. Excellent. Um, I had a question for the new building that we're looking at. What you're obviously, I'm assuming, going to be looking at the climate action type of technology. Yeah, so it, it, we won't be pursuing, I think, the uh, Office of Men Group. Committee agreed we wouldn't be pursuing lead certification, but it's essentially designed to lead standards. So we'll be far more energy efficient from that. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? It's carried. Next. Moved by Councillor Haig, seconded by Councillor Smith, resolved that the Council of the County of Frontenac receive the office of the Chief Administrative Officer expropriation of land for the purpose of the key trail report and further that the clerk be directed to introduce a bylaw later in the meeting to authorize an application to approve the expropriation of lands for the purposes of the cane trail. Sure. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I mentioned earlier about uh, the expropriation, the last time we went through this in South Frontenac, I know we had Wayne Robinson look at it. Did he look at this 
uh, area or did we not engage him to do this? He, Wayne has not been involved in the day-to-day -day negotiations. He's traveled the entire trail and helped us out with some writing issues. And he has talked to two of three uh, <coughs> properties that, that we're looking at today that we haven't engaged him in the day-to-day -day negotiations. But he has investigated three of these? He, he's He's looked at the entire trail yeah. and has provided us with advice in terms of uh, routing and, and some of the problem areas, uh, but he has been involved in the day to day negotiations. Councilor Wild. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Um, so it's my position that um, expropriation should be our very last option that we're considering. Um, and it's my understanding also, as mentioned, that. Uh, when Robinson had assisted in the past in some sections of the KMP trail, particularly in the central front there. And I think it would be wise to at least consider his involvement in uh, dealing with these landowners before we take the ultimate step of expropriation. Um, I, to me, it's, expropriation puts a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And I don't think that's an image that we want to project for our county. So if we can, um, Managed to conclude some negotiation and successfully. I think it uh, is a uh, kudo uh, for the team to do so. And much better for the county image. Thank you. So I, I can't speak for, for Wayne, but what I can say is that at this point, these property owners have barricaded the trail, and it's a priority for the ATV clubs and the snowmobile clubs that it be open. It doesn't mean that. We can't continue negotiations. In fact, there's one that reached out again this week. But if we don't start the process, the trail will be closed for another winter, which is a disservice to North Frontenac and to the Snowmobile Club. So the two can happen in parallel just because we passed the motion by law today doesn't mean that we can't conclude negotiations. But if we don't start now, it will definitely be closed next winter. Councillor Vanderwall. And Jerry, did you have your hand up? So Councillor Vanderwall, Councillor Merton, and then Councillor Hayes. Yeah, I do. So go ahead with Councillor Vanderwall first. I guess my comment would be if you go in conjunction together, it's almost like the union negotiation where you've said something already. I I would support saying at least having it, and I know. I know he doesn't work for the township or the county, sorry. But I think at least if he could, if he was willing to reach out to those three individuals and say, is there any sort of a compromise here or is it no? And if there isn't, and I'm not saying Richard has done it right or wrong, I'm not condemning anybody that's reached out to these people, but Wayne seemed to have a better rapport, I guess, with most of them before on the trail. And so I, I would at least suggest that if we could have enough time to take a month before our next council meeting to have that conversation. And if he comes back and says they're not budging or whatever, then I think we should start that process. You're right. Then right away. And that still gives us a year. I mean, the next winter is a year off. So I, I, I would, I would also like to support that at least have that conversation and if it's if it's no it's no then we know exactly what they Councilor Martin uh, I uh, agree with uh, Councilor Vanderwell but I wonder if we've had any uh, face to face conversations with these uh, these landowners I know I I had experience in a past life sort of thing with with land and um I know you sit down like across the table face to face, you'll get a lot further than you will with phone calls and, uh, and letters. And also some property owners would prefer to have something like an easement across their property, which is pretty much as good as an expropriation, but have an easement that way their property doesn't become a severed piece of land. And because that, that affects the land value in the future. And I really think uh, uh, the negotiations face to face and Wayne Robinson's probably the right person to do this, would benefit the, the county. I, I think that's the route we should take before we, uh, I think that Mr. Uh, Councilor Vanderbilt is absolutely right. Once you, you say something like the union has, like this is our stand and there's no turning back, then we're locked in. And I don't think we want to be locked in when we're talking to property owners. That's my comment. Thank you. 
we, we are, our pardon me, um, an easement is one of the options we offer. Some properties, it makes sense to sever because it actually adds value, it creates two developable lots. And some people would prefer that it remain uh, as one property, in which case a registered easement on title is an alternative. So we are open to both options and those options have been related to all of the, the property owners. Councilor Hanks. Just for my understanding, is it a matter of money or is it the fact that they just don't want it? They don't want the trail to go through. Maybe both. I first went out to comment, but it's your speech. Yes. The first time. McDonald, then Councillor Smith. Sorry, Councillor McDonald, then Councillor Smith. Yes, uh, through Mr. Chair, a question to someone. Uh, I have heard through the grapevine that the, one of the big issues in regard to boat locks is, is the relieving of any liability concerns of uh, users of the trail going across private land. I suspect that we've, we've presented some ca case where that liability can be removed, but uh, that's one of the the exposure uh, to liability is a major concern. But I just want to point out, I think there's some expediency necessary here because this is not just a snowmobile trail. This is actually an ATV trail and a great amount of the traffic in the summertime is ATVs. So uh, moving forward, I think it is of importance, but I would like to see it like everyone else. I'd like to see a satisfactory agreement arrive, arrive at before uh, the last Resort is actually applied. Thank you. Councillor Smith. I, I, I agree with Ryan and well that we could take a look at where we're at and is there any movement, but I don't think we can put this off for long. I don't know if Wayne would even want to do this. Certainly we could ask him, but I think his hands are pretty much tied as far as what could be negotiated. We have the evaluation of the properties done by the appraisers. Um, expropriation is the last, the last thing that can be done if there isn't any movement. So I'd be willing to support asking Wayne if he would want to take it on to speak to each of them to see if there is any negotiations possible, but I don't think we can put it off for a long time. And I forgot who was next. Uh, was it you, Mark? Well, if nobody else. Sorry, Randall, well. The only other comment I would make then is if, if by chance we approve this today and say hold off, or is, it gonna, is that going to already set a bad tone? So I, I, if we're going to hold off for a month, then I would rather just not approve this today and hold off for one month. I think it would be better. And sometimes, whether Wayne wants to do it or not. But sometimes when they actually sit down with these people, they go, well, you know what? The only thing I don't like about this whole thing is this. And then you go, okay, well, that's not that serious, but they didn't want to say it to somebody else. So I, if, if, if we're comfortable holding off one month till the next council meeting, I think that sets a better tone than approving it maybe today if the other part fails, but I don't know which way you want to go with it. Um, if I could just add some comments and prepared for today's meeting, I don't want to go through uh, sending a letter for expropriation to the residents in North Rhinebeck at this point in time. Um, I would prefer to see, as everybody else has mentioned, to have Wayne go in and negotiate. I have a lot of respect for his negotiation and the tact that he deals with residents. Um, so I'd like to defer this decision. I did speak to Wayne and Wayne is willing to uh, step in if, if we would like to to. to sit at the kitchen table and have a face-to-face -face discussion with it. It hasn't happened face-to-face -face at the kitchen table. It's been done by phone and emails. This is from one resident that gave me feedback and he would prefer to have a sit down. Uh, doesn't have high technology. He's got a rotary phone. He doesn't understand emails and, and things like that. So I think it would be respectful if we have Wayne go in and have a sit down and explain the way he did with uh, Central and so that would be my position. So I would, I would like to see this deferred and have council recommend that we have Wayne get involved uh, to sit down and negotiate with the residents before we take 
this action. Do you need a mover for that or? We need yeah, move move motion up there. yeah, I'm in the chair, so I need a mover and a secondary. So, so who moved? Council McDonald moved second. Yeah. 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 Okay. Move okay. Okay. Move okay. Move okay. Move okay. Moved by Councillor McDonald, second by Alan, by Councillor Ravel, uh, that we uh, approach Wayne to uh, negotiate with the residents and report back to Council. So I think what we do is we defer this motion. Yeah, defer this motion. Defer this motion. Yep. And we'll have my next message. Okay. That would be my recommendation. Council, so would you want to be that? Can we put a timeline on it, though? I, I think we yeah. need to report yeah. guaranteed for the next meeting. Next month, yeah. April, March 14th, or 16th, 16th, 28 days in February, so I'm at 14. So unless he's in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can read this, we have, um, so it's moved by Councillor McDonald and seconded by Councillor Revel uh, that the motion be postponed to the March 14th meeting, pending staff asking Mr. Wayne Robinson to negotiate with the landowners on potential solution or potential agreement. Agreement's a good thing. Yeah. Can, can I just ask, so we're, we're actually not giving him the power to negotiate. So I don't know if you want to use that language. We want him to have a sit down conversation to see what the stumbling blocks are. I think that's fair because we're not giving them any power to negotiate. No. That's fair. So I can change that just to reach out to the landowners. Just explore. building upon that slightly, the council has approved amounts for these properties based upon the appraised value. It would be very bad form to pay more than, than those appraised values right. because we that's what we paid all the way from the city of Kingston border to yes and, and that's why I'm saying he can't negotiate he can ask what the stumbling block is yeah and we've negotiated on various things like signage and, and yep perfect and and that's that's the word mediate mediate but mediation would be the proper word here Kelly okay four four options Explore options. Yes. And we will have a sit down with Kelly prior to going out on So just for clarity's sake, sorry, are we talking just these three properties or there's two more in this block <laughs> and six going further north? Um, if they're going to head, if they're heading towards appropriation, I would, I would like to see Wayne get involved in any properties that are going to be a conflict. Because, so what, so what are we talking about? Just for clarification, Kelly, how many properties is this motion referring to? So, so this motion refers to three properties in the first block of five. There are six properties in the second block that council authorized us to send correspondence to and Richard has been meeting with over the past well, since October whenever we started this with councils. So yes, so 11 and four by prime would be four. Four. five plus six is still 11 and three in the first block. So I think I don't understand the other six. We were talking about three here. So I would like to see when you talk to you and Richard about the three and if there's other potential ones we could include them if you wish. But these three ones that we got the letter for expropriation are my concern right now. Yes, and as I mentioned, one of the three has just reached out to Richard. And I think it's the same one that was just talked about in terms of difficult communications. So mm -hmm. that may be resolvable mm -hmm. fairly easy, but the other two have not so much. So Richard is here for that. On that note, then I think if 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 we've already asked Wayne to have the conversation, I think if he's going to have that conversation first with you and Richard, I think if Richard sees some challenges coming up, I think it would be appropriate to say, "Well, do you want to have those conversations before we get to the same thing?" At least then you know. 
I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what Richard's doing, but Wayne has a different rapport with those community people. And if you see some that you think are gonna, we're gonna end up in the same boat as we are now, a month from now, then you might as well have those conversations with some of those also. So if that's the intent, then maybe the motion could reflect any of the 11 properties where there are negotiation issues. I think might as well expedite it. <laughs> and make it go faster. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to use a big word. 2022, you're allowed. So um, this is what I'm hearing, um, that the motion be postponed to the March 16th meeting and staff asking Mr. Wayne Robinson to reach out to the landowners to help mediate the process of a potential agreement and further that Mr. Wayne Robinson be involved in the negotiations of the future property acquisitions required for the trail. Not sure what negotiations are there either. Yeah, can, can we just use the word request and mediation instead of negotiation? Right. Wayne could say no and then give one. So. Sorry, and future property acquisitions required for the trail or future difficult property acquisitions? Do you want anything quite catchy to be involved in all of them or just? Um, I think it would just. We're just saying that uh, Wayne and Richard get together to discuss the properties in question and just leave it at that. I think he needs he needs to talk to Kelly and Richard yeah, and have a, at least a bit of a strategy. So we're going to be in further that staff involved Mr. Robinson in the mediation process. Well, it's the same word. Sounds good to me. Just put the word request in front of that. Request in front. Did you have enough paper, Jeanette? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, so we have and further that staff request the involvement of Mr. Wayne Robinson in the mediation of the future property acquisitions required for the trail. Sounds good to me. Does it sound good to the rest of the council? Any further comments or questions? All in favor? Carry. Right. Uh, just in that motion where we did talk about the referral, did we? Uh, uh, the first part postponed. talked about that the motion be postponed to the March 16th meeting right. and staff asking Ms. asking Mr. Wayne Robbins to reach out to landowners to help mediate the process of the potential agreement. Adam Kirk is all right for you to postpone as opposed to third. Is there any right. law in that? Well, Robert's rules of order suggests postpone as opposed to defer. I didn't mean to point oh. that out. <laughs> Undiplomatic. <laughs> Next, we move on to uh, emergency transportation services. Moved by Councillor Vandewall, seconded by Warden Doyle, resolved that the Council of the County of Frontenac receive the Emergency and Transportation Services 2021 Legislative Response Time Standard Performance Plan reporting to Ministry of Health and Long Term Care for information, and further that the 2021 Response Time Standard Performance Plan outcomes for the County of Frontenac be reported to the Director, Emergency Health Regulatory and Accountability Branch. 
Ministry of Health and Long Term Care as required by legislation. Good motion. Any questions? Councilor Vanderwall? I appreciate that you didn't ask to change response times either, because we all know what that means. And I'm still told it's, I guess, I guess we'll see what these times change if pandemic somewhat goes away. But the, the conversations that I'm getting are, it's still the hospital. Everybody is sitting at the hospital. Some people have sat there five days, five hours down the road. <laughs> so, I mean, it's until that gets straightened up, that is putting a huge challenge on our response times for the whole county, because a lot of our rural ambulances are sitting, waiting five hours to get unload somebody. I don't know if you wanted to comment, Gail, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I mean, that's what I hear is still the challenge. The biggest challenge is at the hospital. So, so we certainly are seeing more uh, offices. Uh, Gail, I'm not sure the public can hear you, so may have to grab a mic. So we are definitely seeing an increase in, in our optimal uh, delay times at Kingston General Hospital, and we are working with them as, as most uh, services across the province are doing to try to, to eliminate that. The, the actual response time doesn't reflect the time at the hospital. Um, it's only from when the, the call is received until the paramedics can get there. Not to say that there isn't cases where the, well, so many ambulances are tied up at the hospital that there's a delay getting them out um, to the calls. That happened more in the later half of um, the year, whereas these numbers reflect the entire year. Um, it it'll, will be something that we need to watch. And it also reflects is our higher call volume um, and our, our ongoing need to look at adding more resources as we go forward um, so that we're able to meet these response times. And is that typical across the province for you know, all paramedics or units are having the same issues? That's correct. The off delay time is, has been increasing across the whole province throughout the pandemic. Any other questions? Thank you, Gail. Yeah, if there's no further questions, all in favor? All right. And then next we have is the uh, proposed employee participation. By Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Rebel, whereas the County of Frontenac and the County of Huntington Addington have been granted a tentative seat at the senior decision making table of the Frontenac Lennox Addington Ontario Health Team. And whereas our participation includes the opportunity to assign county employees to various working groups. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County of Frontenac appoint the following employees Kelly Pender, Resources and Finance. Mark Gowdy, Coordinated Discharge, Matt Mills, Communications and Engagement, Susan Brandt, Long-Term Care Network, Kevin Farrell, Health Homes. And further that employee assignment may be substituted by the Chief Administrative Officer depending upon availability and the expertise required. And further that employee participation be contingent upon continued representation by the warden at the senior decision-making table. Motion, any questions? Councillor Vanderwall? I was, are these people, these staff members actually gonna go to the meetings because I'm concerned about, we could hardly get two people there, let alone now all of a sudden add a whole bunch of people because that's what they were trying to avoid in the first place by us only having one representation. So I understand you need the information I don't, by the way it reads though, I thought maybe they were going to the meeting too and that's some of my concern. Two, two separate things. So this, these are the working groups that report to the to, leadership okay. table that the board sits on. And these working groups meet every 30 to 60 days for about an hour. Yep. So it's not a big time commitment, but they will be reporting to the board and I in terms of things that have been discussed there that will be discussed at the leadership. Very good, thank you. <clears throat> and I have a question on the resolution. It says you've been granted a tentative seat at the senior. I thought it was a permanent seat. Yeah. <laughs> at, at this point, they've invited us to the table. They haven't asked us to sign the partnership agreement. And uh, I think 
with the pending provincial election, the transition to the full, to whatever that looks like, has yet to be decided. So we're calling it a tentative placement too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and, and uh, the ministry is uh, in tune with this in kind support. So yes. This is good. And, and I forgot to ask you earlier, is LMA and uh, providing people as well? I, I should have asked you before. Yes, they are. So they, they're actually picking up a couple of seats that we aren't, and we have a little bit of duplication. So for example, I'm the only person on the finance and resources, but we have two people on the communications. Uh, Mark Gowdy is on the coordinated discharge, which involves paramedics, um, but LMA doesn't have this. So they are appointing people as well, but it is isn't a complete duplication. Any other questions? All in favor? Yeah. Carrie? <clears throat> Next. Uh, moved by Councillor McDonald, seconded by Councillor Gates, resolved that the Council of the County of Frontenac received Report 2022-019 Planning and Economic Development Fencing Request, and further that the Council of the County of Frontenac authorized staff to provide the owner with $9,222.50 to assist in the cost of fencing for property located at 1502 Ball Road, legally described as Hitchinbrook Concession One, Part Lot 17, in the Township of Central Frontenac. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Thanks for all of them. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Warden Doyle, be a result that the County of Frontenac receive and endorse the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus report regarding long term care capital construction dated January 6, 2022, and further mm -hmm. that the County of Frontenac joined with the EOWC in advocating for the province to amend the funding formula such that municipal capital funding for long-term care construction be fully paid by the province of Ontario, and further that a copy of this motion and the full report be sent to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Paul Calandra, Minister of Long-Term Care, the Honourable Christine Elliott, Minister of Health, the Honorable Peter Bethlen Kelby, Minister of Finance, Ms. Debbie Rob Robison, Chair of Eastern Ontario Wards Caucus, Mr. Jamie McGarvey, President, Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Mr. Brian Patterson, Mayor of the City of Kingston, Ms. Lisa Levin, CEO of Advantage Ontario. Questions? All in favor? Carried. So we have long-term care home service accountability. Moved by Councillor Vanderbilt, seconded by Councillor Martin, resolved that the Council of the County of Frontenac receive the Fairmount Home Long-Term Care Home Service Accountability Agreement Schedule E form of compliance declaration report, and further that the Council of the County of Frontenac direct the clerk to sign the Long-Term Care Home Service Accountability Agreement Schedule E form of compliance declaration and return to Ontario Health as required under the Local Health System Integration Act. Any comments or questions? I can say this every year. Congratulations again. <laughs> Great job. All in favor? Very good. Moved by Councillor Revel, seconded by Councillor McDonald, be a result that the Council of the County of Frontenac received the Fairmount Home Fixing Long Term Care Act 2021 proposed phase one regulation report. Any questions? All in favor? Carry. Thanks. Ground information reports now. So, um, we have a coffee from Councillor Mark and Councillor McDonald. Any questions, Councillor Vanderwall? I just had one. I, I, I noticed that our CAO did not report on the growth in Frontenac County, which I thought if we wanted to have a public comment on it, we could have included it today. In the, not that people might have not saw it in the week standard or wherever, except I think the growth in this area was obviously substantial, which justifies the planning, all of those other things. And that's just a comment. What was that number? I don't get the wick. South Frontenac was 8.9. Oh, 
and now we're over 20,000, but I don't know them all, but I know they were all listed, I thought. Across the county, it was about 10%. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll cut half that next month, so but just so we all have the same information. Um, so we have reports from uh, Queen's University and the Fairmont on quarterly update. Um, so any comments or questions on those? We want to uh, reports from County Council Liaison. They were just attached to me. Okay. So we're going to do that. Reported community development advisory committee. Uh, moved by Councillor Rebel, seconded by Deputy Gordon Doyle, that the report received from the Community Development Advisory Committee be received and adopted. Any questions? Councillor Rebel? Supported by Regulation was Warden Doyle, I believe, and the first Deputy Warden. Yeah, it's, 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 so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it because it already said something, but I, I was going to say it too. <laughs> Can I write down two in one day? <laughs> I've heard of it. But who's keeping track, right? <laughs> it was, so we will amend uh, to reflect this warden. Uh, Deputy Warden, any other comments? All in favor? Carry. Well, we do have some chuckles in there. Else. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Hayes, seconded by Councillor Smith, that Council revert from, from committee to whole council to council. All favor? Carried. Adoption of reports. Moved by Deputy Ward Higgins, seconded by Councillor Vanderwell, that the report of the committee to whole be adopted and that the necessary actions or bylaws be enacted. <laughs> yes, that talks. any uh, comments on that or questions? All in favor. Do we have any uh, notice of motions to give today? Seeing none, we'll move on to communications. Any questions on those? And this is normal. We get them every Friday. None. Any other business? None. Public question, Terry. Any public questions there, Jeanette or uh, Angelique? Don't see any. How do we determine that? Do you see it on your screen? Uh, I don't see any on the Okay, we're down to bylaws then. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Rebel. Uh, going to have to remove a bylaw. So bylaw A. So moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Revel, that leave be given to the mover to introduce bylaw B that has been circulated to all members of County Council and that bylaw B be read first and second time. Any questions? All in favor? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Rebel, resolved that by law B be read a third time, signed, sealed, and finally passed. Moved by Councillor McDonald, seconded by Councillor Pace, that the meeting hereby adjourn at 10.42 a.m. Thank you, everybody, and have a good day. All in favor?